everyone, I'm Kari Marbo and I'm doing an exhibition with St. Mary's um, called Keith and Kari. Right now we're in my studio in San Geronimo, California, which is just outside of Fairfax. And today I'm going to just show you a couple techniques that I'm using um, to build pieces for the exhibition. So I'm starting with a board here, it's just a wooden board, and then a piece of paper. And the reason I'm putting a piece of paper down is because as um, I'm going to use clay today, and as the clay dries, it shrinks and it needs to be able to move a bit on the bottom or else it will tear or rip. Um, I'm using a clay body called Black Mountain. And the reason that I like Black Mountain is because it has this beautiful color, especially when fired to a hot temperature of Cone 5. And it also has grog in it, which is crushed up fired clay. So it's able to stand um, really well on its own, unlike porcelain, am I right? Okay, so to begin, I'm going to show you the process of making one of these little loopy sculptures. And these sculptures that I've created and will create more of are to reflect on a William Keith's painting on Mount Tam. Um, and when he created the painting, the west peak of the mountain um, was intact. And in the 1950s, the west peak was locked off. Um, in order for um, military op operations um, to be pursued during World War II. Okay, so to start, I'm going to make the base of the piece, so the bottom. And I'm going to take a handful of clay, it's about maybe a pound, and put it into a ball, and then use my thumbs to squish out the sh base shape that I would like. And one thing that's important is to create an evenness to your entire sculpture so that it'll dry at the same rate. Okay, so this will be my base. And then I'm going to take another piece of clay, smaller this time, and squish it, and then start to create a coil out of it, or some people call them snakes. And I can do so in a few different ways. I can rub the coil between my hands, like this, to make a log, or I can put it onto the table and roll it with my fingertips, moving up slowly to, again, keep it even. Now, in order to create the loop, I'm going to take the ends of the coil and flatten them out a bit, fray them out a bit, to create more surface area. And then, if you're taking a ceramics class, or have taken one in the past, you may hear this idea of slipping and scoring, um, which is roughing up the surface of your clay in order for it to um, connect better to the next piece of clay. And I'm going to do that with this little tool that um, I bought on the internet. So I'm creating um, hash marks, which basically look like hashtags, um, a bunch of them together. And I'll do that on both sides. You can put a little bit of water down or slip, which is water mixed with clay, um, but I'm not going to do that today because my clay body is so wet that it doesn't actually need it because I just got it out of the bag. Okay, so I'm firmly squishing both ends to my base. And then you can use your fingers or a tool that has a little bit of rubber on the end or a tool that's wooden like this to smooth out the frayed portion and to essentially camouflage it into your base so that you have a nice clean break.
My piece of wood is sitting on a banding wheel, which is um, a wheel that turns and is sometimes called um, a Lazy Susan, and you can get one at Ikea, should you want. Okay, so now I've connected my first loop to my base, and I'm going to use my fingers to pinch it into a taller shape, or the shape that I desire. And as I'm doing that, again, I'm trying to make sure that my wall or my piece is even so that it dries evenly so that moisture doesn't pool in one area so that it doesn't crack. Okay, so now I have my first little loop there. Oops. You can see that a bit better. Okay, I'm just going to do that one more time to show you. And I won't be able to do this step now because I just put these loops on, um, but a little bit later in the day, it's hot today, so probably in an hour and or so, I can add loops that are on top of these loops. Okay, so again, I scored. And now I'm squishing the base on. And now I'm squishing my shape. Okay, it's so another two. Right. Here's an example on the top of this work where here's the loop, the first loop, and then here's a second loop that I'm adding later. So that's what I was referring to. And if I tried to add this top loop now, um, this, these ones aren't stable enough, so they, the whole thing would fall over. <laughs> and I'm trying to avoid that. All right, now the style of your piece is completely up to you. So you could leave your finger marks in there, or you could smooth out as you go along um, with some water and a paintbrush and make the whole thing night very nice and smooth. Um, it depends on what your style is and the story that you're trying to tell. And every little piece of information, a fingerprint or having something smooth, tells a different story. Okay, so that's the little loop. And then the other piece that I wanted to show you was the fence, which is going to go into the show in a section about Lake Lagunitas. And again, I have my board, I have my banding wheel, and I have a piece of paper. And you can absolutely use um, newspaper or please, please reuse any paper that you have. Uh, in your house. I'm using fresh printer paper only um, for the purpose of being able to show you uh, the piece better in the video. Okay, now the fence is really fun. It's the same idea, it's the coil. And then <laughs> Just gonna plop it on there. Squishy, squishy, squishy. If you don't have clay at home or are not taking a ceramics class, you can also try this out with um, dough at home. 
or you can also buy um, uh, oven bake clay. That's really fun to play with. All right, so same situation. I've made the coil and now I'm opening up the end of it. So it's about the size of um, a nickel. The end, I mean, the frayed part. And then I'm going to, again, attach this to my piece by adding a little bit of scoring on both ends. And I'm gonna stick that right on there and adhere it. And then here's my other post. I also wanted to note that I'm doing this fairly quickly for the purposes of the video. Uh, regularly, I would take a little more time with it. Okay, squishy, squishy. All right, so that's my little fence. If you wanted to do experiment with the positioning of the pieces and um, make them go higher or lower, you can see this one I dipped down a little bit, um, and this one is dipped up a bit. You can always take a sponge or a pe another piece of clay and put those items in between your pieces to give them stability and to help them move in, in a variety of ways. And those little supports, as long as you don't score and slip them, they'll just come right out during the drying process or the firing process, depending on how fragile your piece is. Okay, and that's my demonstration for today. Thank you for watching.